third lecture here for today. Now, who are the righteous ones? In other words, righteous ones that who are not sinners. Okay. Uh, that means who are not sinners here. Righteous one means, righteous one means no more curse holders. Do you remember in the last session that curses in how many parts? Body, soul, and spirit. Okay. See, in opposition to that curses, those who are free from those curses call the righteous ones. In other words, righteous ones means bless, blessing holding ones. Blessing holding ones. Okay, no more curses. Blessing receivers. That means righteous ones. Don't forget, this is a theological term. Okay? And, and there are two languages here. Uh, blessing holders and curse holders. Curses holders. Uh, two kinds of theological term right here. Okay? The, the sinners are curse holders in three parts. Okay, sinners means curse holders in three parts, body, soul, and spirit. Those are we call sinners. They're not a simple term of sinners. Okay, that's a three part sinners, body, and soul, and spirit. Now, Blessing holders means, in three parts, body blessings, soul blessings, and spirit blessings. Okay? So, what we call, they are blessed ones. Then, who would give us blessings back? See, I'm saying, blessings back, return Returning issues. Who would give us blessings back? Of course, Bible said, Jesus will do that. He will be blessing giver back to us. Jesus. That's the important concept here. Okay? Jesus will, out of Trinity God, out of Trinity God, Jesus God, will come to this world and who will give us blessings back. Okay? Let me repeat. Jesus will come to this world to give us the blessings, three parts, blessings back. That is the Bible story. This is the Bible story. This is the Christian story. That is what we call salvation story through Jesus. Salvation story through Jesus. Okay, now, then our question is this. How would Jesus give us, give you and me blessings back? How? That is, how is important. How? He, he told, he told Moses already. See right here? He told Moses. Yeah, Moses. It is a BC 1500. He told Moses and indicating him how he will give us blessings back. 
He told Moses, okay, right here, in Deuteronomy 21, 23. This is very, very important Bible verses. In Deuteronomy 21, 23, he told Moses. Moses did not know what really meant at the time, but he told Moses. He told Moses that he said this, those who die on the cross, you see here in Moses, okay? Anyone who dies on the cross will be the curse taker. Curse taker. In other words, that those who die on the cross will, people will die in many different ways. Okay, any, 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 you know, climb, uh, any criminals, okay, under the mosaic law, uh, should any, so killer should die in ways of, say, stoning to death, sometimes, uh, beheading his neck, or sometimes, you know, poisoning him. And there are many ways of killing and, uh, those uh, killers. But this, especially, special, say, killer or criminal who would die on the cross, cross, hanging on the cross means that that person is a curse taker. Curse taker. Okay? So he will receive curses. Only, only the person who would take curse will die on the cross. That's a mosaic law was given by Jesus. Jesus told Moses, anyone who would take Curses will die on the cross. Okay? Implying that mosaic law to his upcoming physical death, Jesus' death. It's a, so Deuteronomy 21 23 was told to Moses Moses, if anyone who should take curses, you have to kill him on the cross. Otherwise, you kill him in different ways. So it's most severe criminal would be die, would die on the cross. Okay? Are you with me? Now, later, 500 years later, this is Jesus appeared to, you write down underneath here, Jesus appeared to King David. Jesus appeared to King David to confirm, to confirm here what he promised to Moses 500 years ago. Okay? To confirm Mosaic law. Okay. Jesus appeared to King David. Where David saw a vision. He saw a vision. The, a person hanging on the cross. And crying out to Father God. By Saying this, Eli, Eli, lama samak dani. Eli, Eli, lama samak dani. That means, that's a Hebrew word. And Eli, Eli means, it's God. Father God, Father God, 
why do you forsake me that's uh, expression okay so he, david saw jesus on the cross and crying out to father god say father father why do you forsake me he saw that david saw that okay at that moment that david did not know actually what really meant that but he wrote down all the agonies that jesus would receive later described in psalm chapter 22 psalm chapter 22 that early early story was in psalm 22 verse 1 okay now now actually jesus was on the cross in AD 30. Actually, Jesus was on the cross immediately before his last breathing. Immediately before his last breathing, he, he cried out what he had shown to King David. Exact, exact expression here in Matthew 27 46 he's cried out this Eli Eli Lama Samak Tani my father father my God my God why you forsake me Thousand years ago, he has shown to David. Okay? And 500 years ago to Moses. All this pre designed program was actually performed, confirmed here in actual death of Jesus. Okay? Then our question would be this why he cried over why he cried over with that expressions why that's our question that is the question that you have to raise up and, and, and answer to your people see at that moment at that particular moment Jesus was taking all the God's people's curses upon his shoulder. At that moment, at that moment, let me repeat again, at that moment, Jesus took over all the curses of God's chosen peoples. Okay? Past curses, you write down, present curses, and future curses. Let me repeat. All the chosen God's children curses. Not a Satan children. There are two kinds of people living in this world. God's children and Satan children. Okay. He did not take the curses of Satan children. He, he took curses of all God's chosen people's curses in the past and present time and in the future. It was a very heavy burden upon him. All the Curses were laid on his shoulder at that particular moment. For that reason, it was so heavy, he cried out to Father, 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 it is too heavy, too heavy for me because 
I, I became a hundred percent human. As a hundred percent human, it is too heavy for me. So Jesus was a curse taker. Curse taker. Okay. Here, Jesus was a curse taker. How he took the curse? You see here, on the cross. By way of crying out, Eli, Eli, Eli. So you know that. So Eli, Eli, Lama Samakdani means, oh, he was taking curses. All God's people, not all human. We will study more later okay, on this part now. See, now here's again. When we believe Jesus, who is curse taker, at that moment, God's chosen people became a Child of God, no more curses. Okay? We will remove all the curses of what? Body curses and soul curses and spirit curses. Are you with me? Now, however, actually, he did not remove all three curses instantly. He did not remove all three curses instantly upon his death. Okay. Now, he delayed. He, 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 in other words, that upon his death, we, God's people, did not receive blessings in three part Immediate after his death. Immediate after his death. Okay? Now, there are two kinds of blessings. What we call delayed blessings. In other words, we, it's body blessings and soul blessings. We Christians, we're still holding those blood, uh, curses. Okay. In other words, although we are Christians, actually the curses of our body and soul have had been removed already upon the death of Jesus on the cross. However, we we could not enjoy those blessings here while we are in this world. Okay, so we call it delayed blessings. In other words, upon we upon our physical death, as we go back to the paradise, and we will enjoy the physical blessings and soul blessings. So temporarily, we will carry over those curses while we are living in this world. Okay? That is what we theologians call delayed blessings. Are you with me? Delayed blessings. We, we are enjoying delayed blessings. In other words, we have already received the blessings, but God delayed it until such time as we die and entering in the kingdom of God above. However, spiritual blessings was instant blessings. Okay? Upon the death of Jesus, as we receive the God's blessings promised by faith, that as soon as we become a Christians, and spiritual blessings are immediate available. Okay? So now we are not enjoying spiritual blessings. In other words, we became a child of God. No more Satan child. 
upon the receiving of Jesus. So that spirit blessings already got realized why we are living in this world. Okay? With an exception of this, physical and soul blessings. Still, we are the same as before. We have, see, gaining age, you have a space limitation and communication limitation. We still have that. Curses. And also, we still have the satanic characters. But slowly, slowly, okay, as a child of God, we will transform into God's likeness, his image, his character. You see, when we go up to the heaven, how can be determined your position in heaven? Your position in heaven shall be determined by how how resembled your character would be. In other words, how you follow the, the character of Jesus. In other words, how you are sanctified. The degree of the sanctification would be the determining factor for your future position in heaven. Let me just briefly review again. Who are the righteous ones? Okay. Those who have blessings back. Okay. How can we have blessings back? Through the crucifixion of Jesus who will be taking our curses back. Okay, how do we know Jesus taught this to Moses in Deuteronomy 21, 23, B.C. when? 1,500. And also that was fulfilled in the life of King David. David saw the upcoming death of Jesus on the cross in Psalm 22, verse 1. Then later, and actually in his physical crucifixions, he confirmed what he has said to King David. Okay? So upon his curse taking, we have blessings back already. However, our physical and mental part of blessings were what? Delayed blessings and spiritual blessings were instant, realized blessings. And upon our physical death, we will have those physical and mental blessings realized. Okay? Therefore, our Position in the heaven will be determined by how holy, how, how sanctified your characters would be. That is the determining, determining factor in your uh, position established in the kingdom of God. Okay? Now, this is a simple lecture, but very profound. Profound means very deep spiritual meaning inside. I hope you share all this with your people so they can have their own spiritual eyes open. Okay, as a result, they will love Jesus ever more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.